Hey, Washer Shippers, and welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I want to share with you five parameters every stream keeper must master. Number one, pH. And why pH is so important is because pH determines whether your stream is breed or not. Like for example, crystal red streams prefer a lower pH below six, and tiger streams prefer a pH of above six. And for new caridinas, they can range between six to eight pH. So pH is one of the determining factor whether your stream is breed or not. Like for example, if you're gonna put a you know a new caridina right inside a uh, caridina parameters on the pH, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna be very very optimum. They will still breed. However, it will not be as much or as many babies if you put them in the right pH. pH is being controlled by the soil type that you use like for example we use active soils that we place in the reset baskets so the active soil determines the level of pH and can we control the pH yes through the type of soil that you use and is measuring your pH important yes definitely that's very important and one of the things that we normally use is the trans instrument uh, pH pen and one of the reasons is because it has been very very accurate even for many many years For so for example this pen we purchased this in 2018 So it's been now it's 2025 almost in 26 and it has been ongoing for so many many years And of course we bought the latest one as well. It is much faster in reading, but All in all it is important to measure your pH and we do not use drip test on pH pen uh, pH testing and one of the reasons is because drip test may not be accurate and it expires quickly and there's no way that you can actually measure them accurately and that's the reason why I encourage everybody to get a very very reliable pH pen it can last you up to 10 20 years and there's no problem as long as you keep recalibrating them as you use so number two KH Carbonate hardness. Carbonate hardness is really about how to stabilize the pH. If you have a very hard KH, like for example, if you have a KH of 4 and you want to reduce your pH to below 5, it's not going to be very easy because in order for the pH to actually come down, in order for the pH to actually come down from, let's say, a pH of 7 all the way down to 5, what we need is that we first have to reduce the KH before the pH will drop and that's the second part of KH because if you use soil nature soil like active soil then you will not be able to actually have KH it's all built inside the soil so that's the reason why not many people will measure KH however if your pH does not come down you should measure KH and the reason is because then you'll be able to find out if there's KH in the water that's preventing the pH from going down so that's the second part. The third thing that you really need to look at is or the most misunderstood indicator is really around TDS. So TDS is nothing but the total dissolved solid. It is a it's not a target number that we want to achieve because it's more of like a consistency meter. So nowadays there's a lot of meters in the market and it uses electrical probes to actually measure the TDS in the water. So right now, this TDS pen is a uh, USB charge and it has an LCD screen as well. It's really, really effective. But however, this does not tell me every single thing that is in the water because for Caridina and even new Caridina streams, measuring TDS is nothing but just a number to give you a guideline. It's nothing but an indication. So what then matters other than TDS so that's coming on to the fourth and more important part of it the fourth thing is GH and this is where it gets really really critical which means that you can have a TDS of 300 ppm or a TDS of 180 ppm and a GH of varying numbers and what we want to actually achieve for caridina streams is between the range of three to six because we have seen this range across europe across the united states 
South Africa, Australia, even in Asia, between three to six, it works perfectly well. And how do we actually measure, and is it important to measure GH in this setup? And yes, so the short answer is yes, it's very important. And what we do is that we use a test drop. So this, we use Colombo, and it's one of the more accurate uh, GH test kit that we have actually used apart from the other uh, test kit that we have actually used as well. The reason why we use Colombo test kit is because it is very popular in the marine industry and it's always been very very accurate and we like to use it and it's very clear the amount of the colors uh, turning from you know blue to, to pink or pink to blue I think that is something that is very indicative and allow us uh, allow us to actually know what is your GH in the water. So what does GH comprise of? So GH comprise of two elements. Number one, calcium. Number two, magnesium. So these two elements build up the GH. However, what is important is that you have to ask the person who is selling you or offering you the salt or the calcium and magnesium GH plus what is the ratio and why is this ratio so important because a lot of times we see videos online saying that you have to add this calcium block you have to add this calcium block but calcium alone does not mean anything because calcium cannot be fully utilized or metabolic metabolized through just calcium alone it needs magnesium and a lot of salt in this in the market actually do not consist of magnesium because magnesium is slightly more expensive in terms of raw material and that's the reason why there is no magnesium in the in the sorts that you actually get like your GH plus your, your salty B and things like that so they do not actually have magnesium and why magnesium is so important like I have mentioned it requires magnesium to actually absorb the calcium so there's the there's the absolute reason why we need magnesium together with calcium in a 2 to 1 ratio which means that 2 parts of calcium to 1 part of magnesium so that's for water water parameters would require a 2 is to 1 calcium to magnesium ratio so ask your seller in terms of the salt that you provide so that's number 4 and number 5 which is the last thing is about temperature as you can see we actually run an AC even in this small room to actually regulate the temperature in this area and one of the reasons is because caridina streams prefer a lower temperature level which is around 72 Fahrenheit it's between 68 to 72 Fahrenheit or you know, between 20 to 24 degrees Celsius I think that's where we want to hit the, the right temperature and that's why for them to breed properly they will require a 24 degrees Celsius and below I think that's the optimum temperature anything above 24 degrees like for example if you are at 26 degrees celsius or even 80 fahrenheit they may not breed however they will not die i think that's one of the misconceptions we get a lot is that if you have a very high temperature the shrimps is going to die they will not die they will become lethargic they will not breed that's for sure because it's out of their optimum range of breeding however they will not die they will become lethargic they will slow down in feeding However, there's one very, very crucial thing. If you use temperature in a, in a very right or in a, in a manner that's advantageous to you, like for example, what we do is that we raise the temperature of some of the grow up tanks. And the reason for doing that is that it increases the metabolic rate, it increases the activity, it increases all this, which means that within three months, they can actually grow much bigger. And then we lower the temperature to actually slow them down. And that's where we want to use temperature as our advantage. So these are five things. So the pH, your KH, your TDS, your GH, and your temperature. So these five parameters that every string keeper must interact closely and understand closely. But don't chase for perfect numbers because what we want is that we should chase stability. So the balanced parameters tend to thrive longer and better. So thank you guys for watching this video and until next time, peace out.